There's a lot of ways to gain entry to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. But there's only one way to gain entry to Barefoot Resort. And that's across this bridge that spans the Intracoastal Waterway. You hear the cars going by above, except when a boat comes through. Then the bridge comes up and the whole world stops for a couple of minutes of relaxation to look down the Intracoastal, enjoy the view. After that, the real relaxation begins in Barefoot Resort. Four great golf courses, wonderful accommodations, two outstanding clubhouses with great food and a great porch to sit, relax, and enjoy all there is to offer from our latest episode of The Traveling Golfer, Barefoot Resort, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Trey Evans at Barefoot Resort, an amazing property that I've learned to love over the years. Tell us a little overview of this property, three great golf courses. Well, here at Barefoot Resort, we do have a 54-hole facility. We have three great designers here at the resort and the die course uh, across the street. We have the Norman course, uh, Love course, and Fazio courses. Uh, you know, uh, when they announced this entire property at a press conference at the PGA Merchandise Show in Orlando, I was there, and they had all four architects there in one spot. And then, of course, a year and a half later, they opened all four properties the same day. Amazing. It, it is quite to get all four of those guys in the same place at one time is probably uh, quite a treat. Yeah. So, talking about the three properties, I'm going to put you on the spot. I have my favorites. I want to know your favorite hole on each of the courses. Let's start with the Greg Norman Design course. Greg Norman Design, I'll touch on 14, one of my favorites, short par four, hit driver out there, makes it a short pitch and putt or you can hit mid iron and then you'll have a wedge in. Next hole 18, risk reward part five, hit it up the left, you can get home in two, should be an easy birdie. Favorite hole on the Norman course though, gotta be number 10. Part three on the, on I'd, the waterway. I'd have, to, I'd have to agree with you on that too. <laughs> Beautiful hole. And it's time for our Stracoline putt of the day. The Norman course at Barefoot's a good example of the application of Stracoline. The greens are very large, but without any huge features. Subtle breaks that the human eye might not be able to see. Stracoline helps. Norman course at Barefoot is a great example of minimalist construction. Everything close to the ground, no tees pushed up in the air, no greens pushed up in the air, and everything right in front of you. The Tom Fazio Design Golf Course, a favorite of a lot of people at Barefoot. There are a number of callers that call. They want to know who's what's your favorite. I lean towards the Fazio Course a lot. And how about your favorite hole on that? Favorite hole on the Fazio Course is going to have to be number four. I really love that long par five, straight at you. Everything's kind of right in front of you. Uh, if the wind's right, you can definitely get home in two. You know, Fazio grew up under the tutelage of his uncle, the great George Fazio, PGA Tour player, first PGA Tour player to become a golf course designer. And he always said he loved a long straight par five right in front of you. It sort of brought out the grandeur of the golf course. So I would I, agree with you on yeah. that. Also on the Fazio course, you're gonna have a great number of par fours and par threes. Uh, favorite par four on that golf course is gonna follow up number four and be number five. Basically almost the same, same yardage as the par five that you just played. 
Uh, so it is getting out of there with par is going to be really good. That's a long par four then. It is. A lot of bunkers on there as well. Uh, par three that I really enjoy on that golf course is going to be number 16. Very nice looking uh, mid-range par three. Large green, uh, huge bunker on the right, nice little pond on the right. And I would say that's one of my favorite par threes on that golf course. And then the Davis Love course, maybe the most player friendly course out here? Uh, some people would disagree. Uh, I like to agree with you. I've, I tend to score better on that golf course. Um, the front nine, definitely gettable. Start out birdie, par birdie birdie out there and you're off and running. And there is a distinct feature on the love course because there's some ruins out on the course. Absolutely. On holes uh, four, five, and seven, you're definitely going to see some, uh, some ruins out there. They uh, fabricated an old plantation home out there, which is uh, definitely very aesthetic to the golf course. There's some eye candy out there, but your favorite hole on the love course? And I will go back to those ruins again, hole number four. Uh, short par four, definitely drivable. Pretty easy birdie if, you got it, if, you, if you're in play out there. Players don't just love the love course because of the ruins holes. The back nine has a lot of drama to it. Absolutely does. Uh, once you make the turn there, hole 13 that you get to is going to be a shorter par 5 on that golf course. Uh, you can kind of pick the left side or the right side. There is a creek that runs up the middle there. Um, if uh, you want to play it safe, hit it out to the left. If you want to get a little aggressive, you can go up the right. But, uh, you know, correct winds, you can get home in two from either side. He likes making birdies, I can tell that. Finish might be a little bit tougher, though. Correct. Once you get to 17 and 18, those are two of the toughest finishing holes on any of the property out here. Uh, hole 17 is going to be a long par four, kind of almost a blind tee shot once you get over the hill there. Uh, comes into a really large green that's tiered. Uh, 18 is going to be a very tough par five. Driving, uh, you got to keep it up the right side or you end up in the, uh, in the waist on the left. Uh, usually always a three shot hole into that par five because uh, it's always into the wind. Travis Dutcher head golf professional at the Die Club, a course that is separate from the other three Correct. at Barefoot. Yep. And separate in a number of ways. One, because it's had an amazing history over the years. Yes. Yeah. Money After the Masters, it's a program that we have all the time coming in. Um, Celebrities, yeah. Hootie and the Blowfish. Correct. Uh, sports stars, yep. PGA and professionals. Whole, yeah, yeah, PGA yeah. professionals. Yeah. Jim Furyk plays almost yeah. every year. Yeah. How about it? Yeah. And just about everybody in exactly. Myrtle Beach exactly. out for the exactly. day. It's packed here. Yeah. It's great. It is. And you've had some events and even got some television coverage. We, yes, we had. Uh, Big Break of Myrtle Beach was here. Um, great event, great personnel that was on showcasing the courses, uh, not only here to die, the other courses as well. Um, but great personnel, great staff, fun part to be with. Um, and of course they're competing in that. Correct. But there is no more pressure packed competition than the final round of the World Amateur Handicap Championship. Absolutely. I'm coming up on just about 20 years of playing in the World Am. Wow. Me, and 3,000 of my best friends from uh -huh. all around Absolutely. the world. And it's all quite an experience. Uh -huh. And that final is here for a reason. And it's because the die course is one of the great golf courses in Myrtle Beach area uh, with so many great holes. Yeah. A few of my favorite though that I enjoy are um, hole number 10. Uh, it's a short par four. It, you can, it's a risk reward for long hitters. You could hit a driver, potentially go for the green. Um, but if you miss it, you could be in the water left, you could be in the bunker green side, and it's a tough up and down. Some of the tee shots at the die club can be visually intimidating. Got to pick a specific target and focus on it. easier to play this course from the middle of the fairway. And you might even make a birdie.
close. Another one is uh, hole number 12. I enjoy hole number 12. Par five, it's almost straight away, little dog leg right to a kind of a hidden green. Um, we got big hitters, can get there in two if they hit a good drive. Uh, but my favorite hole is by far number 18. It is a tough, challenging hole. Uh, you have to get in the fairway. If you don't get in the fairway, you're lucky to make par, bogey or worse. But it is a my favorite hole by far, like I said, uh, very similar to uh, TPC Sawgrass 18. It is a beautiful hole, tough, and the wind is always in your face, but my favorite hole by far. Well, there's a lot of tough holes, but there are a lot of birdies out here. There are birdies. Including yes. the one in the tree that will not hey, stop. Right, exactly. So welcome <laughs> to the traveling golfer there, birdie. <laughs> and after the round, there's a great place to stop and relax. There is. There is a full bar uh, and restaurant. You can sit outside with a nice, beautiful day like today. Sit outside and screen in porch, uh, listening to these birds that are, that are <laughs> chirping. Um, you can sit inside the AC, watch a little TV, some golf that's on, um, and uh, have a whole big restaurant um, as well. If you have a bigger group, you can sit and relax and enjoy yourselves. It's a special experience at the Dye Club. It's a special experience at Barefoot Resort, all brought together by our good friends who have hospitality number one on their list. With the new Exotic CXS, we've loaded each product from driver to iron with the latest performance innovations in golf club design. The Exonics EXS Hybrid features a flight tuning system with a 4-gram interchangeable weight in the rear, which brings back the center of gravity. The weight can be adjusted to change swing weight and launch characteristics. Cup face technology is featured in the EXS Hybrid, increasing the amount of face flexing for increased ball speed. The EXS Hybrid design is highlighted by a thinner Japanese high-density steel cup face. HT980 steel allowed engineers to make the face thinner over previous models for staggering COR all over the face. This evolved face design works in conjunction with variable face thickness technology to produce shots that curve less when miss hit away from the sweet spot. The center of gravity is positioned closer to the face of the hybrid for less spin. New wider speed channels create an even faster club head speed and enhance the aerodynamics of the club head due to less friction with the turf. On top of all this tech, the Exotics EXS Hybrid comes standard with a genuine Tour Preferred Mitsubishi Tensai shaft. If you demand the best of the best in technology and performance, look no further than the new Ultra Premium line of Exotics EXS by Tour Edge. One moment changes everything. Distance, precision, decided in a microsecond. So reduce your ball spin and get the most performance at impact with four yards more. A next-gen golf tee proven by pros and players like you. The unique durable design flexes at contact, reducing ball spin, giving you tighter control and more distance. So change your game and get four yards more. Brought to you by Greenkeepers. Golf smart. storied development history of Myrtle Beach. There have been some amazing projects, none more so than Barefoot Resort, a project that actually made history at the very beginning. We've got the historian right here. Dave Ginevro is general manager of Barefoot Resort, has been here from the beginning, maybe before the beginning. Dave. Welcome to The Traveling Golfer, and if you don't mind, take us through this amazing history. Sure, thank you. Number one, I appreciate having the opportunity to be on The Traveling Golfer, Tony, and always spending a few minutes with you. Um, I was fortunate. I started about a month before we opened. I started in March of 2000. We opened the doors at Barefoot on four courses April 13th uh, of the year 2000. It's the first time in history that anybody in the United States have open four courses at one facility simultaneously. 
And, uh, you know, nobody of real note you got as far as the architects to build these golf courses. <laughs> it's, it's like the Mount Rushmore of golf out here. <laughs> uh, yeah, yes, it is. Uh, you know, Greg Norman, uh, Davis Love, Tom Fazio, and Pete Dye, you know, when you can name those uh, four golf course designers and you can offer that at one facility, that says a lot. You know, we never have a gentleman come in or a golfer come in or any of our members come in after playing the Norman course and saying, oh, well, a couple holes reminded me of the back nine on the Love or the Fazio course. That doesn't happen. These are four completely different designs. Four completely different golf courses on an exactly similar piece of property. I mean, there were no major differences in the property itself, yet they designed four different golf courses, so there's interest all the way through. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when we started, there was 2,400 acres that, um, that the Puglia family purchased here and then decided to design four golf courses. And there was, when I started in March, there was one condo building uh, here on site in process of, of being built. Uh, now there's over 3,200 rooftops inside of Barefoot. You need all of the rest of the things to make it appealing to the people to come here, stay here, and now even live here year round. On property, you've done that. There is a restaurant right by the tower. There's also a sports bar at the driving range, the huge driving range you have, and that makes it a lot of fun. Yes, it does. Uh, we have a 30 acre lighted facility that we have here at Barefoot. And when our guests come down, especially, you know, early spring, they're coming from up north. Sometimes they haven't even seen the ground or the grass for three or four months. And they have their golf clubs and they're ready to come out here on these challenging golf courses. And uh, to go out there without hitting a few balls is, is a little difficult. So they have that as an opportunity before the round, after the round, if they need additional practice. And then they can just grab their clubs, throw them in a the trunk and walk in a sports bar and watch the um, basketball, football, baseball, whatever sport it is, whatever season it is, and just enjoy the rest of their day and relax. One of the great entertainment complexes of America, not just Myrtle Beach, Barefoot Landing that has grown and regrown over the years, restaurants, shops, clubs, whatever you want. Absolutely. Uh, that uh, mile and a half drive to, to get to Barefoot Landing, <laughs> to have over 100 shops and 15 to 18 restaurants, and whatever you're hungry for, you can find it. And, uh, you know, if it's four guys on a golf trip or if it's a family, you're going to find a niche uh, to be able to get something to eat. The House of Blues, a famous name that brings in so many of the famous entertainers around the country. And then you have Alabama Theater, which is always a, a great show to, uh, to bring, to go visit as a family, uh, young children, the dancing and the singing. It's always top notch. First question people ask me all the time about Myrtle Beach is where to play. Followed very closely with where to stay. And you have the answer for that. Yes, I do, Tony, thank you. Uh, if you're here on a golf vacation or if you're here for a family vacation, Barefoot Resort Rentals with the check-in right here on site at Barefoot has uh, a lot of choices for you uh, when it comes to staying here at Barefoot. They have Edgewater units, uh, immaculate villas within gated communities, waterway and golf views. They have North Tower units that have direct waterfront, uh, unparalleled views of the waterway with Barefoot Landing and some ocean views. They have townhomes that sleeps up to eight, more space for families that come down here with garages and actually patios with a nice view of the golf courses. And then they have your basic two bedroom, two bath golf villas, which a lot of our golf packages stay, which it works for the golfers that come in and they're on the golf course all day. They go back shower and then out to dinner that night. They're not worried about uh, having, always having, you know, great accommodations because they're here to have fun and they're not in the accommodations very long when they are here. You know, some miscellaneous things that uh, the villas offer, they have a seasonal shuttle that'll take you to the beach or barefoot landing, uh, which 100 shops and restaurants in the House of Blues. You know, the 10 minutes from Broadway to Beach, Myrtle Waves, Restaurant Row, and then really only 20 minutes from the Myrtle Beach International Airport. So if you're flying into Myrtle Beach and looking to come to Barefoot on a golf vacation or a family vacation, you land at the airport, you're 20 minute drive and you're here ready to start your vacation. 
For those coming to Myrtle Beach and looking for one-stop shopping on a golf trip, uh, Barefoot Golf Vacations, our own on-site package company, we're here to help you book and set up everything that you'll need when you're here. We'll book your golf courses, uh, four courses here at Barefoot or any other golf course here in Myrtle Beach. We include your breakfast with it, discounts on golf, discounts in restaurants. We'll make dinner reservations for you. You choose the type of accommodations you want and we'll take care of everything. We want to make it easy for you to, to come here and just have fun. One-stop shopping for everything from a place that might just be a pit stop to the highest of luxury accommodations right here at Barefoot Resort. The toughest thing about a trip to Barefoot Resort, packing up the clubs for the trip home. But the best thing is, I know I'll be back real soon. Hope you are too. We'll see each other on the next episode of The Traveling Golfer. Tony Leodora's golf wardrobe courtesy of Antigua, the leader in modern golf apparel. Tour Edge is the official equipment sponsor of The Traveling Golfer.